having a great time. And Dead Man Walking is having an amazing life. Well, it has 50 performances this year alone. It was in Sweden. It's in, uh, it was in Dresden again. It's going to be in Hagen, in Vienna, in Sydney, in Dublin. And, and then next year, I, I can't even remember. We have a new opera called Last Acts that will open in Houston uh, on February 29th of 2008. And it's based on a play by Terence McNally that was a very short play that he wrote for a benefit. And I've been wanting to adapt this into a music theater piece for about uh, seven years. So it's a real dream come true. And it's specifically written for Frederica von Stade. And then it's, she plays a great famous actress who has always had to balance career and family. And her two adult children are played by Kristen Clayton and Keith Ferris. And then there are 10 instruments on stage, including two pianos. I play one of the pianos and Patrick Summers plays the other one. And then the instruments are strings, percussion, and uh, a wind player. And it's everyone's on stage, three characters, 10 instruments, all on stage, directed by Leonard Folia. And the libretto is by Gene Shear. And it's, uh, it explores this family over three different decades. And it's, it's got a lot of high drama and as well a lot of humor and tenderness too. But it's really something I've dreamed of for a long time. It's sort of a natural progression for me from um, To Hell and Back, which was a one-act opera, straight through 40 minutes intense with two characters, and a piece I just wrote that was done in Seattle called For a Look or a Touch, which was a young baritone named Morgan Smith and, a, and an elder statesman in the baritone world, Julian Patrick, um, and the two of them with a piano quintet. So again, small forces, action-packed, one act, 40 minutes, and, uh, and so it's a natural progression in that, in that world of intense chamber that feels big dramatically and operatically. Well, it's a little biographical for all of us who have chosen a career and a family, but... But it, has, it definitely has elements of her life. It's not based on her life, but uh, I think she'll, she can relate to it. But anyone who's, who's struggled with that passion that's inside of you to pursue a career whether you're a lawyer or a surgeon or a chemist or you know or uh, an artist of any kind and you also have children or a family and how you balance those two things because you have those are both huge responsibilities so finding your way through all of that um, that's that's the journey of that piece that's the internal conflict of Many years ago, I saw a master class on Broadway, and I was really blown away by the writing. This was before I even knew I was going to have the privilege of working with Terence McNally on Dead Man Walking, or the Statue of Venus, or the new opera that we're going to be doing. And I was so taken by the, his use of language and the way it explored uh, a very complex personality with very clear words and an economy of language. And I found great poetry in the language. And so it was a dream of mine to set that final monologue for Masterclass where Maria Callas says her last words on the stage before leaving. And she's been very wounded at the end of this play. And she takes a moment to stop and explain why it is we do what we do as artists, as musicians, and as human beings. And uh, I finally had the opportunity to set that in memory of someone from San Francisco who passed last year. His name is Jimmy Schwabacher, and he founded the Marilla Opera Program, which has been responsible for so many young singers' uh, careers and livelihoods. And, and so it seemed a nice tribute to him that those are words that he could have said as well. And there are, I think, words that many of us could say. And I set them for uh, Joyce Di Donato, the mezzo-soprano, for the 50th anniversary of the Marilla Opera Program just a couple months ago, and we gave the premiere at the gala. But the piece is really about exploring why, we, why it is we do what we do, because 
we don't know how to do anything else. This is where our passion lies. And it's not about money, and it's not about personality, and it's not about ego. It's about being a vessel for something but larger to say. And, uh, and what a privilege and joy that is. Um, I'm writing a, a song cycle next year for uh, the Wigmore Hall in London. It's a, it's a piece for their Poulenc Festival, and it'll be for the tenor John Mark Ainsley uh, with piano, and it's Gene Shear is going to write new texts for me based on Poulenc's conversations with his collaborators. So that'll be it, April of next year. Um, and, that, and then it's working on this epic opera and also the project for the, for the Metropolitan with Lincoln Center Theatre which is a project where we're developing operatic works. And I have a, a writing partner, and uh, we've found a subject, but we've announced nothing. Just that I'm working on something for the Met and Lincoln Center. Well, I'm about to make a recording uh, called Passing By that will feature songs that I've written in the past couple of years, including the final monologue for Masterclass to be recorded by Joyce DiDonato, uh, a cycle called Here and Gone, um, which is for two uh, men, a baritone and a tenor, and a piano quartet. And I wrote it for the Ravinia Festival a couple of years ago. And it's going to be recorded by Paul Groves and Keith Fairs. And uh, I'll be playing the piano and the strings are from the San Francisco Opera Orchestra. And that's a cycle about not missing what's presented to you in this moment, embracing the moment and recognizing that things will never be the same, you know, so recognizing love or beauty or, or joy when it comes to your life and not turning your back on it. And um, it has poetry by Rachel Lindsay and Amy Hausman. And also on the CD is the lullaby from At the Statue of Venus, also to a text by Terence McNally. And that's going to be recorded by Susan Graham. And a new set of duets um, with, that were recorded by Susan Graham with Frederica von Stada and Joyce DiDonato with Frederica von Stada. And those are new texts by uh, Charlene Baldridge, Armistead Maupin, myself, Eugenia Zuckerman, and then an, uh, a text by a deceased poet named Raymond Carver. And those are all about mother-daughter relationships. So there's conflict and humor. <laughs> And another song cycle featuring my friend the mezzo Zheng Chao, who's a, a Chinese mezzo, American now, she's Miss America to me. And uh, she'll be recording a cycle I wrote to her a few years ago on poetry by Raymond Carver called Times of Day, which is about the arc of an entire life through uh, the, the span of one day and the, the things that are precious and are fleeting. And it's only 10 minutes and it's mezzo and piano trio. So that's the gist of it, and there will also be a soprano cycle on it. I don't want to forget about my soprano friends. And that'll be an older cycle called Songs and Sonnets to Ophelia, which has poetry by Edna St. Vincent Millay and uh, Isabel Byron Darien. No, that's all on one CD. Oh, Action packed. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be about 70 minutes of music, an hour and 10 minutes of music. I don't know. Hopefully, uh, by either later this year or early next year. And, uh, the end of the affair got recorded in Kansas City, so uh, we're working on editing the recording of that. For a look or a touch was recorded in Seattle, so that will be out later. And I did a benefit recording for Classical Action in uh, January that features um, Joyce Castle in the cycle I wrote for her, Mary Phillips, Zheng Chao and Frederica von Stade. And that one's called Flesh and Stone. That's all. That's enough. <laughs>